You're watching Telecom TV. We are currently at BT Sustainability Festival held in Adastro Park. And now to talk more about this, I'm now joined by Director of Adastro Park, Lisa Perkins. Hi, Lisa. Hi. So can you tell us a bit more about the R&D ecosystem at Adastro Park? I'd be delighted to talk to you about our R&D ecosystem here. We have, um, so Adastro Park is home to BT's research and development teams. Um, so in terms of our research, uh, our raison d'etre is to find purpose with the research that we do. So whether that's research across AI, networks, cybersecurity, um, IoT, immersive content, we have you know, a wonderful team of super skilled experts that research in conjunction with our university partners around those topics. And the ecosystem that we've developed here at Adastral is actually wider than just BT. Um, so we also have here on site about 150 other companies as part of our tech cluster, uh, which we call Innovation Martlesham. And what that enables is for us to create lots of wonderful collaborations uh, which help our businesses in, that are involved in the ecosystem to thrive and be connected to opportunities. But it also helps BT to find innovations with those companies that might be relevant uh, to BT and BT's customers. Uh, so it's kind of a lovely marriage of our research and innovation, our partners, our universities, the businesses that we reside with, and um, it kind of creates that effective uh, innovation ecosystem. And what are some of the solutions and products you're working on currently here? So, well, as you can see, and I hope you've kind of enjoyed as you've walked around, is a whole spectrum of different uh, solutions. And what we've got here at the festival um, are a lot of our partner organizations, a lot of our, our vendor and supplier community, and a lot of those companies that are res resident here in the ecosystem. And they're showcasing many of the innovations that they are working on that will help their businesses and their customers' businesses be more sustainable. BT particularly is interested in solutions around uh, kind of how do we deliver sustainable solutions. So connectivity and networks is obviously at the core of what BT is all about. Um, and we are interested in the innovations and the solutions that mean that we can deliver connectivity to the, to the UK um, in a much more sustainable fashion. So already we've been able to power the network capability for the UK uh, as part of BT's network uh, with 100% renewable um, energy. Uh, but we're also looking at how do we cool the equipment in more innovative ways as, as one example. So um, one of our research teams is looking at how do you cool kit in liquid as opposed to air, um, because that's much more efficient in terms of an energy consumption perspective. But there's lots of other innovations that we're working with um, that have a, have a great sustainability impact. So for example, uh, in terms of immersive experiences. So we have a whole research team that look at the um, creation of immersive experiences that bring people together virtually so they can collaborate really effectively, which has a wonderful knock-on impact that hopefully we're connecting people in a way that they don't have to jump on a plane or any other form of vehicle to, to do that connection. So thereby having a much more sustainable uh, solution. Also, Internet of Things is absolutely pivotal and there's lots of companies here that are showcasing uh, how you pick up data from devices so that you can optimize the way you want, might manage your energy. And we've been trialing uh, solutions with many of our partners at Adastral, where we've got devices located across our campus uh, and we can track the energy consumption right across site. And it gives us the insight to be able to make uh, informed decisions as to where we might want to put in specific programs of work to drive down consumption of energy. For example, you know, areas that have got a lot of footfall, you know, how do we make sure doors are being closed and, um, you know, 
other such initiatives in terms of just at a macro level, aggregating all of those little interventions up has that impact of having uh, a reduction in energy consumption. And it's really been effective. So across the, uh, uh, the last couple of years, we've seen a, a significant down um, fall in the consumption of energy on site. And that helps us have a really effective conversation with our customers because we're living and breathing the technology that we believe in that has a sustainable benefit. And can you share a bit more about the liquid cooling announcement you just made? So we are delighted that we're going to be announcing uh, next week uh, the projects that we're involved in with a couple of different partners uh, around cooling equipment uh, in different forms of kind of liquid. And we're looking at different liquids, different kits, and working out what the most optimum solutions are in terms of the different scenarios for, uh, for different types of equipment and what is the optimum solution that means that we can um, have this reduction in energy. Uh, you know, at the macro level, cooling a liquid is much more effective than cooling an air. But then again, in terms of how you cool a liquid, there are use cases where, depending on the technology and the liquids that you use, you can have different outcomes. What are the main challenges when it comes to finding the right partners to work with here at Adastro Park? Um, so actually, one challenge is a really great challenge, which it really, which is there's a lot of choice. Um, so, you know, how do you hone in and, and identify who the right partner is? And that's why we involve ourselves very often in industry collaborations, because it opens you up to working with more than one. Um, so, you know, we can create these collaborations that we might lead, but it opens up the ecosystem a bit. Um, the other challenge is, you know, IPR. So obviously BT is very invested in creating uh, intellectual property. So again, that has to be considered in terms of how and where we share our research, because obviously we want to be cognizant of protecting our, our IPR. Um, so it's, you know, choosing the partners um, that allow us to be able to do that where, where that's appropriate. Um, but essentially, uh, we've got a lovely choice of, of kind of partners. We work with a whole spectrum across all of the different projects. And we like to utilize the spectrum of companies from major partners through to startup companies. So we recently had a collaboration that involved one of our innovation martyrdom companies with some very niche innovation, but we were able to scale the impact of that through the collaboration with significant industry partners, which was beneficial for, uh, for the smaller company as well. And what are your future plans for Industrial Park? So I have what I believe to be a very exciting vision for Adastral. I think it's already an amazing place um, with a lot of significant impact in terms of the work that happens here. Uh, we've got a huge heritage in terms of innovations that have been world changing um, and I'm not dramatizing literally. Um, moving forward, what I want to see is us to dial up the impact that we can have by leveraging and growing each of the ingredients that we have here on site. So uh, working really effectively across BT to be laser focused on the theme for Adastral, uh, uh, investing in our facilities and assets that we've got, such as our test beds, our labs, uh, and our showcases, um, and growing the ecosystem. So growing the numbers of companies that will be here um, resident within our ecosystem because it just gives us that wider opportunity for finding further innovations to, to kind of feed the thinking and the research that we do. And can you share how much you invest into R&D work here? So the, the research itself is actually kind of a small component, the, the D dominates, you know, in terms of the development side of things. Uh, so I think two and a half billion over about the last five years is something uh, that we've been associated to that combination of the research, but also the development. And lastly, because we are at Sustainability Festival, what is your favorite use case or favorite application and um, demonstration that you definitely want to show customers or partners? Oh, that's a really tough one. I've seen some really, really great ones. Um, uh, I, if I had to pick one, 
Um, I think the energy, you know, the, the item, the, the, the innovations that really allow us to use our renewable energy, uh, because I think in terms of the impact to the world at large, you know, but it is difficult because there are so many great innovations here. Lisa, thank you very much for speaking with us today. It's been my absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.